Hi, we're going to do a follow up on these grow watt inverters. My previous uh, video on these was not very good and I'm hoping I can do better this time. So, these are the 5000 ES. For the money, I believe they're the best inverter you can buy. And so now we'll go over why. First off, is you can put 450 volts into these inverters. So I have eight solar panels hooked up per string. So there's eight of those in each string, those solar panels out there. Okay. And uh, what that does is that allows me to put 360 volts per string into these inverters. And you can hook two strings to each inverter. So on these ones here, I've only got one string of solar panels coming into the inverters. On my that third inverter is hooked up as charge only this is not providing no loads to the house but I have two strings coming into there I have 12,000 watts of solar going into these three inverters with 6,000 going into that inverter on the end with two strings of eight panels I have one string of eight panels going into these ones with the loads on them and we're pulling about 44% of our load on those two inverters I am charging my hybrid plug-in electric car so and I've had people ask about how I'm doing different things on this so I guess I'll show you now I cannot, um, this bar is grounded, so all of these, uh, the cases on these inverters are all grounded. These bars grounded, you can see the screws going into the bars at the top and the bottom, okay, we're, uh, We're doing 39.4 amps on this inverter. This one here is going to be uh, it's 13.1. That one's 12.7 uh, on that. But on the uh, okay. It's showing minus 14 amps. So we're drawing on the battery to charge that car. Or I'm sorry, no we're not. We're putting in. Sorry about that. So now it's showing 23 amps. So we're putting 23 amps into the batteries. So, I do have these inverters hooked up with uh,
These are two watt cables. You hook the positive on the left, the negative on the right. Okay. And I do use grid as a backup. And the grid and the power to supply, I have the positive hooks up, the red hooks up on the center pole, and the negative hooks up on the right. And that's actually, that's actually my other um, power load. So if I had my boxes open, okay, you have, you have two different legs of power. And the black hooks up to the one leg, the red hooks up to the other leg. And all those have to be the same. So, the, if I have the black and the red hooking up here, right, say the red's at top, the black's down below, I do the same over there, and each and every one of these is hooked up to the exact same. And that's very important. You have to hook those up exactly the same. Okay. The uh, transformer, I have a ground hooked up to it. And the ground that hooks up to this transformer is also what grounds my bars. So, the cases on all of these are grounded even though I don't have a ground going internally. Now, this ground only hooks up in this box. The ground that comes in on this box over here, okay, this ground that hooks up on here is tied to the grid. That, that does the, um, the grid, the grid power has this ground. This box here is grounded by a separate grounding. This is separate grounding. And that's what's hooked up to here and that's what does the, the back of my inverters. The box on my inverters is grounded. So, I just wanted to point that out. Somebody was asking me a question about that yesterday. So, no, I do not have a ground hooked up internally on these uh, inverters. My ground is hooked up to the uh, okay. Okay, you hit the ground up here. And you go down here, and it's connected. So, what that does is, it grounds the exterior of all my inverters. My uh, transformer is hooked up to the ground by the bars, and the bars ground all my inverters. Okay, so each of these inverters is rated for 6,000 watts, which makes it very nice. 
we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and hook them up to six thousand watts each. The transformer it it handles the imbalance. And I am thinking about getting another transformer. That way I have a backup. Then I would have two transformers feeding my, my power box. The power box on the right is the power that goes to the house. The power box on the left is the one that comes from the grid. And I do have These two plug-ins here, those are both off the grid. These are off the grid. Okay. Just in case something, I, I've, then I've got two power supplies that I could charge up my batteries if need be. Anything like that. I do have the Gill and E-Gill batteries. Okay, so I got 30 kilowatts of batteries hooked up to these inverters. And right now, the reason why the power is so high is I'm charging my plug-in hybrid car. It's, uh, you know, why not? <laughs> I'm doing about 180 miles to the gallon on that car, and it helps pay for the solar. I, I was making the same payment on that um, Toyota Highlander, but I'm not going through the fuel. The Toyota Highlander uses, a, and that was a hybrid, it uses a lot more fuel than what it should have been using. And with this, uh, using my solar to power the car I'm getting about 180 miles to the gallon so these inverters and all my solar is getting paid for a lot faster now we're probably saving at least $300 a month on that and then we're saving our our average electric bill was $170 a month so and I've been paying about 14 that's the service and you know a couple um, a couple thousand watts and uh, so you know they charge you know in order to keep the grid tied to my system and I do not back feed the grid the grid only comes in and it only is activated when you need it it's not it's not activated when you don't okay so we'll uh now these white um, cables allow for communication with the batteries okay so the white is the communication which turns into the red comes down here to the batteries okay and this box is what they call a solar assistant and that allows me to monitor what my system is doing the only thing that's not monitored with that Okay. And this red, I'm not I'm not pulling down the batteries. What's happening is even though it doesn't it shows that I'm drawing off the batteries, what's happening is is this third inverter does not go through the solar assistant. They do not have an application unless you tie your inverters all together. You would have to have this white cable going to each of them and then the black cable going to each of them. Okay. 
So that inverter, all it does is power the uh, batteries. Okay. If you look on the load, there's zero load. All it does is charge up the batteries. So that does not get counted. The power it produces does not get counted as going to the uh, load. Okay. So even though it's showing that I'm drawing off the batteries, I'm not. Okay, I'm actually drawing off the power that that third inverter is producing. So, I figured I'd do a little update. And this system, it, it works really good. I power my house, to charge the car. Basically, it does, it does everything. And I'm only using two of the inverters. You don't have to have that third inverter, but say something happens with my other two inverters, I can turn that third inverter to where it's helping to power the loads while I take out one of these other ones if it goes bad. I could, you know, take it off, buy a new one, and put a new one up. And I would still have two inverters up and running which it, I mean I, I think it's a cool idea we are gonna do some more work to our system here later on but these inverters are nice they are they are powering everything I need they power my house now they're powering my car you know it just I, it's just unbelievable and I'm using more of the power that I'm producing and I'm still charging up my batteries so when we get the other panels up and start producing more power we'll uh, we'll either we might just buy more batteries and uh, that way for cloudy and what not you know the cloudy or snow days will have more storage and then we just you know our cars a, a plug-in hybrid so then we could just run on the gas and it's still going to get 40 miles to the gallon say it's snowing and there's no sun for a few days two three four days you know we just save our battery storage for the house and just run on gas for you know however long until the sun comes out again yeah and there's people that think that you know you have to buy a soul arc well there's videos out there you can watch david pause's video that 6500 to 7000 dollar inverter it it tripped when you're trying to put a lot of load to it I put a lot of load to these inverters I had all three hooked up at the time and did a load test and they they handled the load no problem these are I, I think these are the best inverter you can get for the money and hopefully some of you people will have as much you know luck as I've had so please like comment, you know, and subscribe. Thank you.